Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm a former British Army soldier and today we're going to be looking at the AC-130 gunship on steroids. Really looking forward to this. This is basically a plane, heavily armed plane, able to just do low level flying and take out targets. Brilliant piece of kit. Let's get into it. Remember to like, subscribe and turn notifications bell on. This is America's lethal AC-130 gunship on steroids. Just look at that flying overhead. It's just devastating, isn't it? You do not want that above you. The historic lethal and combat test... So Nereza, Sam Wilson... Thank you, Sam. Looks like he's ex-military. Let's get into it. T-130 gunship, known for attacking ISIS and Taliban fighters during close air support high-risk combat missions, is getting a massive technological upgrade with newer weapons and avionics to Look increase the effectiveness of the attack platform and extend its service life into future decades, service officials said. Yeah, so they just said then that they're going to extend it into decades. So they're basically getting, they've got some long-term contracts set up uh, to make it worth the money and worth the upgrades. And they're bringing the weapon system to upgrade the uh, AC-130 and hopefully it'll last another 10 to 20 years. That's what they normally want to do when they do a massive sort of heavy upgrade that cost um, billions to do, which I'm sure this most probably did. AC-130 gunship work involves upgrading the plane with weapons, targeting systems, and sensor packages, Colonel Robert Toth, Chief of Tactical Aircraft, Special Operations, and Combat Search and Rescue Division, told Scout Warrior in an interview. Early variants of the AC-130 gunship first entered combat in the late 1960s during the Vietnam 60s. War. Later variants served in the years. Gulf War, War on Terror, and War in Afghanistan, among other missions. <laughs> that Gun is literally up. going back to that. That is footage from the Transformers film, I'm sure it is. Or in Afghanistan, among other missions. The gunships operated by both the Air Force and Special Operations Command are often used to support Special Operations fighters on the ground engaged in combat. Yeah. The aircraft is known for its 105mm side firing cannons which enable it to fire from a side axis position during close-in combat supporting ground troops. The so let's just put this off straight away before we move on to that. This aeroplane has a 105mm gun on the side of it that it fires onto the target. We're now moving on to a 25mm Gatling gun. Okay, this is sort of the firepower you're seeing already. You know... T-130 gunship also has a 25mm Gatling gun and a 40mm weapon according to Air Force statements. Look at that. The Lockheed Boeing build aircraft uses four Allison T-56 A-15 turboprop engines, each with 4,300 shaft horsepower. The 155,000 pound aircraft has a 132 foot wingspan and hits speeds of 300 miles per hour. Its crew consists of a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, fire control officer, electronic warfare officers, flight engineer, TV operator, infrared detection operator, loadmaster, yeah, and four aerial gunners. The AC-130 Spooky 2 gunship is a standard C-130 transport aircraft engineered for close air support combat. So yes, it's the old C-130 uh, that used to basically drop in paratroopers in the British Army. Uh, Hercules, but they are now transitioning or have transitioned, I believe, away from that to C-17. Um, so they're no longer doing that at the C-130 like I used to. Um, but that's what this plane is. It's just a kitted out, devastating piece of... Ah, oh, just a devastating piece of kit. Absolutely. Look, it's just a plane on steroids that you can see it all there. But that's what it is. It is just an old transport plane 
with some guns on the side. Its 105 millimeter gun, called an M102 howitzer, fires 33 pound high explosive shells at a firing rate of 10 rounds a minute, according to a report in Popular Mechanics. 10 the rounds a minute, a so just before that, 10 rounds a minute, a 105 light gun crew in the British Army could most probably get off, I think it was around six to eight rounds a minute at first maximum. Um, so that's pretty decent to do uh, 10 rounds a minute consistently. Range of up to seven miles and is the largest gun ever operated from a U.S. Air Force aircraft, the report said. Look at that. The aircraft's 25mm Gatling gun, the GAU-12, is the same weapon now on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The weapon fires both high explosive incendiary and armor piercing incendiary <laughs> rounds against enemy fighters, Jesus. buildings, and light vehicles, popular mechanics writes. High explosive and armor piercing. C-130 Fleet. The AC-130 gunships make up a small portion of a fleet of roughly 500 C-130 planes throughout the Air Force and Special Operations Command, Toth explained. The cargo planes are used to airdrop supplies, equipment, weapons, and troops in forward-deployed locations. Yep. As a propeller-driven aircraft, the C-130s can fly and land in more rugged conditions and withstand harsh weather such as obscurance. The propellers make the aircraft's engines less susceptible to debris flying and causing operational problems for the engines. Awesome bit, It really yeah. allows you to do that tactical movement of equipment and personnel to take the airplane to the last tactical mile. A lot of our transport strategic airlifters are meant to go to a hard runway to a hard runway somewhere, and then they turn over the cargo to be moved to the forward areas to a C-130 or a vehicle. The C-130 allows you to take that cargo and land on a smaller runway or unimproved airfield, Toth added. C-130s are used for domestic, international, and war zone transport, including homeland security, disaster relief, and supply deliveries, among other things. There are probably missions that have yet to be dreamed up for the C-130, Toth said. The fleet consists of 135 more modern C-130J aircraft and 165 older C-130Hs, which have been around since the 80s, Toth explained. Also, MC-130Js are specially modified airlifters engineered to transport Army Green Berets, <laughs> Annie, look at that. Navy SEALs, and Army Rangers. <laughs> sure. They are essentially a C-130J further modified with defensive systems, with radar countermeasures and infrared radar and advanced sensors for specialized missions. They can also perform in-flight refueling, Toth explained. So you can see how good these planes are and how valuable they are to the air force the army like they are used all around the world constantly for so much you know whether it's transporting troops equipment whatever it is needing to go out the back it's used constantly throughout the globe and was heavily used um, during afghan times as well um, so the army are the british army and the royal air force are slowly getting rid of them they've they are bringing them in, but it looks like the American have, have a massive fleet. I know this video is about three years old, but they've got a much larger fleet than what we have had for a very long time. So they must be relying on it a lot more than us, but I know they've got like the C-17 Globe Master as well. C-130 Modernization. The Air Force remains vigilant about its C-130 fleet to ensure the airframes, wing boxes, avionics, and communication systems remain safe and operational. This is particularly true of the older 1980s-era C-130Hs, Toth added. The thing that causes the greatest risk to the airplane is the life of the wing. We monitor the wing of the aircraft, and as the wings get past their service, we bring the airplanes back in and bring in new structures with the primary focus being the center wing box, which is the area where the wings mount to the fuselage, Toth said. As for when a C-130 requires a maintenance upgrade to preserve and maintain service life, the Air Force uses an assessment metric referred to as equivalent baseline hours. The wing boxes are changed once the aircraft reaches a certain severity factor in its operational service time. 
This is necessary because the wear and tear or impact of missions upon an airplane can vary greatly depending upon a range of factors, such as the altitude at which a plane is flying, Toth said. Low-level flight may be three to four times the severity factor of flying at a higher yeah. level, he said. Thicker air. Avionics modernization program Increment 1 involves adding new 8.33 radios to the aircraft to improve communication along with initiatives to upgrade cockpit voice recorders and digital data recorders. C-130s will also receive new collision avoidance technology designed to prevent the planes from hitting terrain or colliding with one another midair. AMP Inc. 2 involves a larger scale effort to integrate digital avionics throughout the airplane. Inc. 2 will require nine months to one year of work to be completed by 2028, Toth explained. This will allow us to bring the airplane from analog to digital, integrate oh, a glass yeah. cockpit, and use touchscreen displays. We'll get away from the... Like everything, it's going from analog to digital. It was no wonder, um, you know, it's about time they're most probably going to do something like that then. Everything they want to be digital, uh, you know, easier. For everyone to use old systems of avionics where we had dial driven instrumentation to where it's all digital this makes us able to process a lot more information toth said as part of the new c-130 modernization calculus the air force will consider retiring some c-130hs and replace them with newly built c-130js the service has the authority to acquire an additional 20 c-130js toth added we continue to evaluate where it makes sense to retire an older airplane and instead put that money into buying new airplanes, he said. Awesome bits of kit, and I used to love jumping out the back of them and the side of them is where we used to go. Ah, um, oh, amazing, love them. AC-130 gunship, I've never actually personally used that, like you say, more, more normally for special operations, but you've heard of them, you've seen them, and they are awesome bits of kit. Uh, such valuable um, sort of tools to have in the box. They really are. You've got to be aware, obviously, they're low-level flying, so they're mainly flown at night, but absolutely amazing. Um, and, what you know, it's good to see that they are upgrading these bits of equipment so they can stay in service, but stay up to date um, and be ready and available for the, for, the, for the operators and for the tasks and missions that they'll be going on. So let us know your thoughts. Uh, give us a like, comment, subscribe, turn the notifications bell on. Let us know what you want to see next, and I'll see you soon.